Well, good morning. Sunday morning, February the 12th. As you can see, I've got my best bib and tuck on, as the Australians say, and uh, I'm ready to go to church. I thought I'd record this. Well, a little bit cloudy outside, cold, but it's another God-given day. Thank you, Lord. We're going straight into the Bible, the King James Bible, the book of Matthew, and it is chapter 26. We're finishing it off, the second half, 26 to 50. Oh, it's a big chapter. It's split into three. There we go. Chapter 26, verse 26, Matthew. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out onto the Mount of Olives. I'd love to know what hymn they sang, wouldn't you? Then saith Jesus unto them, All you shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, I will not deny thee. Likewise said all the disciples. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, that's James and John, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrow, sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomever shall I, I shall kiss, that same as he, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus, and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they, and laid hands on Jesus, and took him. That's sad, isn't it? I guess I don't really need to say much about that, do I? 
the Bible's self-explanatory in the best part. You can see the wrestling between Jesus, who's 100% man and 100% God, in his prayer. That he asked for this cup to be taken away from him. That's the cup that was offered in the covenant. Do you remember? They talk about the Galilean wedding. And the cup is offered to the bride and she accepts it. And he's talking about the cup of the covenant, you know. He says, let it pass over me. Just, just, you know, that's the 100% man speaking. But the 100% God says, but not my will, but your, yours be done. And that's the battle we have going on inside of us, isn't it? Jesus laid that down for us, that he, that he understood we will have that battle. Even though we have the Spirit in us, as he indeed did, and was 100% God, that he, he let us see the man side of him, how the man side of him wanted to walk away from this and say, no, I, I, I can't take it. But he succumbed to the Spirit and to the 100% God part of him. And you say, well, that's because he was Jesus. He, had, he was 100% God, 100% man. But think about this. If you've taken on the Holy Spirit, you've got 100% God inside of you because the Holy Spirit is God. Is part of the Holy Triune, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So yes, we can have that same battle. We can wrestle the exact same thing that Jesus did. And we do often. The question is, which one wins, man or the Spirit? We want the Spirit to win, don't we? But so often, I know, I've let the man win because it's been too hard or I haven't been committed enough or enough faith. But it grows. It grows within you. That's called sanctification. It grows within you. Well, we're about to leave for church, 10 o'clock service. I'm assuming Pastor Ron is preaching. I made that assumption the other week, and uh, it was Jason. They gave a great sermon, a great sermon on time. And so uh, I'll speak to you later. Have a great day. Enjoy the Lord's Day. Worship wherever you can. And uh, remember, God loves you, and I love you too. I'll speak to you later. Bye-bye.